Welcome to Strong, Savvy, and Mindful, everybody. I'm Amy Polacco. I'm thrilled to be here. I'm a freedom warrior, which is an entrepreneur, a coach. Uh, I'm a fierce advocate for women. I founded Strong Savvy Women as an empowerment group for women who are not just divorced, but single, widowed, going through transition. Um, our goal is really to help you and support you with inspiration as well and to empower you, you know, um, and I, I think that's what we've created, which has been a fabulous. I'm joined by the amazing Deb Lauren, a mindfulness coach with Deb Lauren Coaching and uh, like Felicia said, we're so sorry Susie Bissett could not make it today. She is on a plane right now, <laughs> and that was like a last minute thing. And um, that's kind of how this year has been, right? So it's like we we just we're just gonna roll with it, right? So um, just a little bit about me. Um, I am a, a former uh, reporter. I worked in the corporate world. I worked at Vassar College before leaving to be my own boss. And once you do that, guys, it's hard to go back, right? You know the working from home and having no alarm clocks, all of that. And, and um, that's why I'm a freedom warrior, which represents not just the freedom of the entrepreneurial life, but also living life on your own terms, sometimes after some not so good relationships or could be a divorce. Strong Savvy Women actually started in my living room, I guess about an, a year and a half ago. And there was a woman there who was in a post-divorce crisis that night, uh, we were sitting in a circle and everybody rallied around and helped her, you know, with legal advice, with emotional support, um, encouragement, and something just clicked in me that night, you guys, and it made me think, I've got to make this bigger. There are so many women out there just like her who need this. So we launched at Haven about a year ago, right before everything happened uh, and it was a fabulous night it was a great party and thank you felicia for always you know supporting our mission supporting women so much and especially the women of strong savvy women and our growth so you know um th this community is really one that i wish i had when i was going through my stuff but um honestly many members are not just going through divorce maybe they have gone through it and they're loving the community and really paying it forward by helping our current members with advice and, and all of that. Or, you know, maybe they've never been married and they're single. Maybe they're widowed. Maybe they're just going through a transition or thinking about making a change. We've had speakers on dating. We've had financial topics. Last month, we talked about loving yourself. It was madly in love with me. And we had the amazing psychotherapist uh, Phyllis Weiss Yavner, who is a member of Haven with tips on healthy relationships. But this time we thought, you know, we could use a quick half hour for ourselves, right? So, um, you know, after I get through and Deb gets through, we would be happy to have questions. We love it when it's interaction. There are, is interaction. But before we get to Deb, I just want to recap this year. And um, as, as I'm saying that, I know you're like, what? <laughs> I don't need to see a highlight reel of this year, right? And it makes me think that I live in Ridgefield, Connecticut. And I was walking down the street with my son the other day and our church, St. Stephen's had a sign out that said, you know, service commemorating the one year mark. And he looked at me and he's, oh, he's really funny. And he's like, well, that'll be a depressing service. Like <laughs> what's gonna happen? Depressing music. And like, and he's like, I don't think we need to go to that. Like, and so you may be feeling that way, but um, I, I just, first of all, want to give you a round of applause because you, you've made it this far, right? It's been one hell of a year. Yes. <laughs> and especially for women, you guys, um, I don't need to tell you that, you know, our unique challenges and demands sometimes are not recognized or applauded enough. So that's why I want us to applaud for ourselves here. You know, um, this year has been devastating to the leisure and hospitality sectors, which are disproportionately made up of women, especially Black and Hispanic women, right? Women hold 76% of jobs in healthcare, and we owe so much to our healthcare workers, obviously, who are continuing to work right now. And, you know, even before this year, women traditionally already have difficulties balancing or challenges balancing everything, family, caregiving responsibilities elderly parents, spouses, kids, 
and then taking on homeschooling and supporting remote learning, right? You know, many women left the labor market and some were simply forced out. According to a recent McKinsey report, while women made up 46% of the labor force before COVID-19, women have disproportionately lost jobs and account for 54% of job losses. So, you know, those challenges are even more complex when you are a single woman, right? Because you don't have that choice to leave your job um, as some do. You have to figure out a way to do it all. And I was struck the other day, you guys, by the story of a woman who was on ABC News. Usually I watch NBC, but I happen to be flipping around. I'm glad I was. She, she, uh, she was a, a woman, I forgot where she lived happened to be African-American with seven children. And one of them uh, had special needs. He had Down syndrome and she was a bus driver and she had to leave her job, of course. And she had a table set up with like seven different remote learning things. And just imagine, so I was like, okay, I'm never going to complain again, right? Like she inspired me, her, her uh, positivity, her resilience. And that's what we women are known for, right? So, you know, also, and um, one of our strong savvy women advisors on our panel, who's not here today is Rosemary Ferrante, who's a mediator and attorney. And she can certainly attest to this, that navigating parental visitation in the middle of all this with, you know, uh, we live on a border with another state. And I know, you know, my ex-husband lived in, in, that, in New York and I'm here when everything started happening. So, you know, that has been a whole new adventure, to put it mildly, during this unprecedented um, situation. And on top of this, I'd be remiss if I didn't mention, of course, the rise in domestic violence as women are home and with abusive partners. Um, okay, so enough of that. What's, what's the good news? <laughs> I know. Okay, you haven't, left, you haven't left me yet. But, um, you know, there is some hope. And many are pushing for this collective experience to create a more feminist recovery plan, right? That looks at workplace flexibility, paid family and sick leave and affordable childcare. Uh, I just wanted to share with you guys a few tips that have helped me this year um, get through things. Um, you know, I don't know about you, but one has been a community being connected um, to a sense of community and Haven is a huge part of that. Just, you know, connecting with people on Zoom, right? Um, and, and connecting in other ways through strong, savvy women. I know, you know, the next event we'll have is really just a hangout because that's what the women want. Like, we just wanna show up in our pajamas, maybe we pick a fun topic to talk about, but, you know, it's so important to talk to someone who understands what you are going through. And um, if you're single, divorced, or in one of those strong, savvy women categories, sometimes your friends, if they're not in a similar situation, just don't understand it. It's hard for them to understand. They have a partner helping. Um, it's hard for them to put themselves in our shoes. So surrounding yourself with people like that is super, super important. Number two is crazy things that have been, and we all need to clone ourselves, right? There has been, you know, some, a few chances to slow down, right? To not be running around at night with kids so much with activities. And um, I hope you've used this time. And if you haven't yet, just because you've been trying to keep your head above water, I really encourage you to, to take some quiet time and think about, you know, where you are in your life, where you want to be, what will it take to get there? who can, can help you get there, reaching out into communities, like we mentioned, or um, someone who can guide you. Um, you know, sometimes it's just, you need to leave your office or your space or somewhere else to have some time away to think. Haven's a great place to go. <laughs> we were just talking about that earlier. I'm definitely gonna be going there soon. I'm gonna leave my son remote learning on his, on his own here. Okay, so uh, number three, give yourself some grace. You know, there were days, guys, where I had, you know, I'm a single working mom, obviously dishes piling up. I used to have a sitter who helped me get some of that stuff done. Um, and, you know, I think we all deserve an award just for keeping things going, right? <laughs> my, my son has been 100% remote learning and I have primary custody, so I don't have a lot of time off, um, except when he's playing Xbox and um, that's my self-care time. So whatever Deb tells us to do today, I'm gonna do that during Xbox time. 
Um, and then last but not least, you know, pay yourself first. And I don't mean financially. We hear that all the time. And in so many great financial talks that Haven hosts, I mean, health wise, you know, uh, I know Susie's not here, but you know, mindful eating, caring about yourself because you have to put the oxygen mask, mask on yourself first. So moving your body every day. And guys, I've been guilty of sitting all day, right? Like your back hurts, or, you know, it's, um, you know, just getting out. Things can wait. You know, you can take a half hour walk. I know that Tony Robbins always says in that quote, you know, the best way to change your state of being is to move your body because your emotion is created by mo by motion. Um, two, planning ahead for healthy snacking. You know, I try to cut up veggies and things, not just for my son, but for me, so that if I have a break between Zooms, I don't end up, you know, eating his cookies or something. So, because, you know, not that you can't have those indulgences, but, you know, sometimes you regret it later, you beat yourselves up. Um, also, starting the day with gratitude. I'm a big fan of the Miracle Morning. I don't know if you guys have read that book by Hal Elrod. Um, there are many parts to it, and some I'm sure Deb may get into today, but the way you start your day really determines your day and having that attitude of gratitude and making it a practice, right? Like some people will work out every day, no matter what, because it's like non-negotiable. Making that gratitude practice um, not negotiable is important too. Um, and then meditation, which I'm sure Deb is going to cover. So, okay, with that... I am going to, you know, pass it off to Deb. She's going to give us some amazing advice on how exactly to develop a self-care routine that goes beyond girls' nights and manicures. Though I did finally get a manicure for the first time in six months. And when your 12-year-old son notices, you know your nails were bad. Okay. <laughs> so take it away, Deb. Thank you, Thank you Amy. Can everybody hear me all right? Thumbs up. Okay. All right. So I really wanted to join this awesome group of women to give a little bit of insight that, like Amy said, goes beyond the spa days and the girls night out and kind of that typical kind of pampering and indulgence link that we have to self care. And we often link it to guilt, right? We often link it to when I have time, I'll do these things or when my to do list is done, I'll do these things. And I think that that's a there's this misnomer, there's a disconnect between true self care and the stuff that yes, I think if we all had spa days regularly and went out with our girlfriends, we'd be happy, we'd be relaxed, but we, we wouldn't actually be taking care of ourselves at the root level. I would still get super triggered and stressed by my kids, even if I had weekly massages. I don't think that that's where we're really going to move the dial. And so what I wanted to talk about today were some of the atypical ways that you can truly self-care that are going to fuel you at the base level, that are going to help you build resist, not resistance, resilience, <laughs> and really help you manage your stress response and help you have more confidence and more motivation to adapt to the daily stresses, to all the ways that you have to show up as a mother, as an employee, as a boss, as a, you know, a daughter, a friend, all the different roles that we play. So the first thing that I want to talk about is the self-care that makes life more manageable. And I think that this just kind of flies under the radar, but really articulating your support system and ways that you can delegate tasks, that you can automate tasks. So my absolute game-changing thing that I have done this year is grocery delivery. And this is just like one thing, but it's so amazing because I know Amy's clapping. It saves me so much time and it's actually saved me money too because I stick to what's on my list. I'm not getting caught up getting those random things that I see. I'm not bringing my kids with me. So there's no kind of mom, can I get that? And can I get that? It's really efficient. The small fee that I pay to use the service, I more than make up with what I'm not buying in extra and in excess, but mostly it's a time saver and it's a way for me to take one more thing off my list that I had habituated. I thought it was my responsibility as the woman or the wife or the partner or the mom to put that on my plate. And so just things like that, if you could get 
extra childcare and repurpose your money places that really support you so that you can show up as your best self at work or for your kids when you're with them. I had a big, big, big kind of guilt year after I got divorced when I had to rely on childcare more and it was hard for me to make that change. But I also realized that with that support, I was able to be a much more present, happy, fulfilled mom when I was with them. And your kids do not need you more. They need the best version of you. They need a happy, fulfilled parent more than they need you around all the time, especially if you're exhausted or somewhere else in your head or you're resentful or you're feeling spread thin. So I always encourage childcare, grocery delivery, even just automating your bills, you know, anything that you can put into a system so that you can free up your brain space. That's self care, taking things off your plate, but still getting them done. But just you're not the one who has to always remember and always put the effort forward. So those are a few examples of that category. Anyone have any questions? No? Okay. All right. So the next one, and I don't want to mess this up, but I want you to think about the self care that helps you manage your stress. And so Amy started to talk about this, but this is so important because so much of our energy is in our stress management. It's not actually in handling life, it's handing, handling our reactions to life. And so if you can really prioritize your sleep and prioritize getting that exercise and making sure that you're eating mindfully and making sure that you do meditate and have a gratitude practice and things that help remind you of your resource to self, of the things that are going well, of the things that are in your corner, then you are more able to handle a kid's tantrum or a last minute change of plans or you know all the myriad things that happen that you have to roll with but that cause you to expend energy, creative space, problem solving, compassion, patience. All of that requires a resource brain and you cannot do that if you're constantly stressed. And so it can feel selfish to make sure that you're getting to bed at 9.30 at night because you didn't get to the laundry or the dishes and now that has to be out, but that's okay because laundry and dishes don't make a resource mother, right? The sleep does. And so you have to start prioritizing the things that are gonna move the dial for you. And so sleep and good nutrition that gives you energy, like cookies are fine, but they also need to be paired with proteins and fats and complex carbs to make sure that you have the energy you need to make hard decisions, to show that, you know, to hold space for your kids when they're having a difficult time. I can't do that if I'm tired and hungry. I don't care how much of a super mom I claim to be. I have to take that into consideration every time I am prioritizing my well-being over my kids' happiness or my busy schedule. I got to make sure that whenever I'm truly active, it's supported and that I'm not constantly showing up all, you know, proud that I like am doing it all, but I'm not actually doing it all well. And so it's a really important thing to take into consideration. And the last thing I want to talk about is your relationship with self. And I think this is by far the best kind of self-care and the thing that goes so under the radar and we don't pay enough attention to it. And I mean like the boundaries that you're setting. I mean, getting comfortable saying no more, really understanding your self-talk, your self-worth, figuring out how you're showing up every day, how supported you feel, and how resourced you are in making that the focus of each morning. If, you're have, if you wake up on the wrong side of the bed, then instead of kind of being that self-inflicted martyr, you say, okay, I'm not having a great day. Who do I need to reach out to? Where in my community can I rely on? What things can I take off my plate? What can I say no to? And how do I communicate with my kids, with my coworkers, with my friends? How do I communicate to share that I need to 
have some support or I need to be, you know, let off the hook for certain things today and really bringing that communication up a level. I think these are not things we typically associate with self-care, but if we can start bringing more energy and focus and communication to how we are embracing life and how we are responding to life, then we can start navigating it with so much more energy and ease and we don't have to be this martyr. We don't have to be this superwoman who is constantly feeling like the only reward is if she can brag that she did it all. And I really want the reward to be your own self-worth, your own peace of mind, that what you said yes to, you did really well. And that next time you can say yes to something else, or you can do it differently, that you're always learning through that process. But there is so much merit to that notion of putting your oxygen mask on first. You know, we want to be able to do it all, but I really challenge you to to do the small things that you do really well. And then you can build upon that as your resourced kind of support system grows with you, okay? <laughs> Does anyone have any questions? I know we're just about at 12.30, aren't we? Yeah. All good I stuff, great advice. I love it. I, um, I actually just, um, was thinking about the, the grocery service that's made you so ha happy. Yeah. <laughs> what, what are you oh, using? For that? So yeah. I use two. I use Instacart and the, um, it's the, Am it's the Whole Foods one, Amazon Prime or, you know, they, they're associated. I think it's Prime Now is the name. Prime so now. if I need Whole Foods, I do Prime Now, but Instacart has everything. I mean, they have groceries, they also have staples. They have like all like different, pro, um, you know, Walgreens and CVS, like they have a lot of variety with where you can shop and what you can do. And so I mostly use it for groceries. And as long as I'm spending about 50 bucks, which is pretty easy, easy to do, um, and I do my menu planning, it is beyond worth it. I mean, I've been able to do the two hour one or I'll order ahead of time for the next day or the next two days. I've been able to maintain monthly cooking for 50. I, I do this thing with Operation Hope and so much of my ability to keep that in my realm of to-dos, because it's a big undertaking, is that all the groceries are delivered and then I spend the time cooking. And I, I can spend so much more time with my family now that I'm not at the grocery store twice a week, which is really nice. Yeah, I love it. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. I think it saves, I do curbside pickup in Richia, but um, I mean, when you compute the hours, you guys, right, the unloading, the going, that it is so much easier. I'm like, why did I never do this before? Right. And I know I always think of that adage of like, you know, you're, you have to treat each hour of your day, like it's worth a thousand dollars or more. Yeah. Right. And so if you can get something that, or someone can help you with something that costs 20 bucks. It is definitely like your time is more valuable and we only have so many hours in the day. So I thought that that was good. Are, are you all set, Deb? You good? Yeah, yeah. I have okay. a link. Um, I could put it in the chat. I have okay. some like brain food recipes if you guys okay. are interested in, you know, making their snacks, meals, things that just help your brain fuel, especially with that stress response. We are in that fight, flight, freeze all the time. I mean, no joke, we're in it all the time. It's our go-to place of where that blood, oxygen, and glucose resides in our brain. And it's only when we move it to the prefrontal cortex that you can have patience, big picture thinking, problem solving, all those executive functions. So learning how to move that fuel is really important and nutrition is part of that. So I'll put that recipe in. Um, and that's where meditation and journaling and gratitude and novelty, all those things play a role as well. It's hard to fit all of this in in a half an hour, but, but yes, there are so many different small things and free things. You know, on my list, I think only one or two cost money. So these are mindsets. They're not line items in your budget. And I think that that's a really big game changer to know that there's a lot you can do on your own. Awesome. There, you have a question there um, in the yeah. chat, but does anybody else have any questions you wanted to ask yourself? Thomas? 
Do you see the question there, Deb? What do you think about taking magnesium? Uh, magnesium. Yeah, you know, I I do have magnesium. I think it's really a great resource to, to kind of nurture that fight, flight, freeze. So I would always recommend taking it in the evenings. It's really helpful for sleep, for really helping you get into that calm brain space. But yes, it is a widely used nutrient that is often underdeveloped in our own body. So awesome. Yeah. Well, that, well, that was fabulous. I mean, if nobody, does anybody have any other comments or questions before we wrap up? I know we like to keep it pretty tight, right, Felicia? Because we know everybody's busy. Busy. We just talked about that, right? So um, did you have anything else, Felicia? You want me to wrap up? Um, yeah, no, uh, for me, this was really wonderful. It's, it's a great way, like you're running around all morning and then you have this little half hour kind of like, okay, to reset and, re and remember. So, so thank you. This was a perfect um, Haven, Haven halftime. Oh, I good. Appreciate, appreciate you too. Oh, thanks. And, you know, for those of you who are guests, we're so thrilled you were here. Thank you. And if you're not a member of Strong Savvy Women, find our Facebook group. We are going to continue to do events at Haven both in person and virtually, and we'd love to have you. Just FYI, the Facebook group is private. I know for some people who are in transition, they may not want you know someone to know. And, and we, we really take that seriously and honor that. So you can find the group, but nobody can see who's a member or anything like that. So um, I encourage you to either reach out to me or um, you know find our Facebook group under Strong Savvy Women. So thank you so much, you guys, for being here. And thank you, Deb, that, that was fabulous. Thank you all, it was my pleasure. <laughs>